the Moon, Venus, Mars and Titan. The only four major celestial bodies where we have purposely landed spacecraft equipped with cameras. Sure, we have crashed into others at the end of missions and landed on asteroids and comets. But in the 59 years since the Soviet Union's Lunar 9 probe successfully touched down on our moon, we have only observed the surfaces of four major worlds from the perspective of ground level. One of these worlds stands out amongst the rest, Titan, a moon where the dominating feature in the sky is the gas giant planet it orbits. A moon not in the warmer inner solar system, but firmly in the frozen depths of the outer solar system, a moon unlike any other we have ever observed. And while a handful of spacecraft have flown by Titan, capturing its enigmatic surface from afar, it was a hitchhiking probe carried by a famous gas giant exploring orbiter that revealed Titan as the solar system's most Earth-like yet profoundly alien world. So let's take a look at the closest images we have ever captured of Saturn's shrouded moon of mysteries, Titan. You're watching V101 Space. My name's Rob, and if you enjoy diving into the wonders of space, don't forget to subscribe for much more to come. In the cold expanse of the outer solar system, a groundbreaking mission unfolded. On January 14th, 2005, the European Space Agency's Huygens probe began its perilous descent through the dense, enigmatic clouds of Saturn's largest moon. For over two hours, it plunged through the hazy shroud, transmitting image after image to Earth via its orbiting companion, NASA's Cassini spacecraft. What Huygens captured in its fleeting 72 minutes on Titan's surface would astound the world, unveiling a landscape both alien and eerily familiar. 20 years on, these images remain the clearest and closest glimpse humanity has of the solar system's most Earth-like moon. Yet Huygens was not alone in its quest to unveil the mysteries of Titan. Its companion, the Cassini spacecraft, played an equally vital role from above. Equipped with powerful radar instruments capable of piercing through Titan's dense golden haze, the signals were transformed by scientists into detailed maps. Over its remarkable 13-year mission in Saturn's orbit, Cassini mapped most of the Moon's surface. And so, if we strip back the atmosphere of Titan, as Cassini allowed us to do, we see a Moon that looks like this. Our first location takes us to one of Titan's most fascinating features, the largest known liquid sea of methane in the solar system. An inky black sea spanning an area 1,170 kilometers, dwarfing Earth's Great Lakes. This immense body of liquid is named Kraken Mare. In this radar image, we glimpse Kraken Mare's northern region, Beneath its inky black, mirror-like liquid surface in places, depths plunge to over 300 meters. Because of Titan's bone-chilling surface temperature of minus 179 degrees Celsius, methane and ethane are the dominant liquid that is able to flow here. Any water is frozen as hard as rock. Could you imagine what it would be like to stand on the shores of such a bizarre seaside? One of the enduring questions surrounding Kraken Mare and Titan's many other seas is whether their surfaces experience waves, like our oceans. Cassini's radar measurements suggested Titan's seas are astonishingly calm, with wave heights measuring mere millimeters. This eerie stillness is likely due to Titan's dense atmosphere and weak winds, which dampen the conditions needed to generate waves. Yet, the presence of waves cannot be entirely ruled out. Scientists have identified a mysterious phenomena across Titan's seas that challenge its placid appearance. 
Cassini's radar detected strange, transient features, dubbed magic islands, that appeared only to mysteriously vanish over time. Not far to the east of Kraken Mare is the second largest sea on Titan, named Lygia Mare, and it is here that Cassini captured a striking example of these magic islands. Within Lygia Mare, radar images revealed sudden, bright reflections where none had been before. These features seemed to emerge from the sea, linger for a time, and then disappear without a trace. The question was, what could cause such fleeting appearances? Could these magic islands be gas bubbles rising from the depths? Or perhaps they are chunks of frozen methane that float temporarily during seasonal changes? According to NASA, the most likely explanation is waves, generated by seasonal shifts in Titan's winds. Yet the true nature of these fleeting features remains a mystery. But where does the liquid inside these great Titan lakes, like Kraken Mare and Lygia Mare, come from? The answer may lie in the surrounding landscapes, where rivers wind their way across the moon's frozen terrain, delivering methane and ethane into these vast basins. This remarkable image reveals a single river from a network of rivers named Vid Flumina. The alien river runs over 400 kilometers, rivaling some of the most iconic rivers on Earth. It winds its way across the icy plains, carving a path through the haze before emptying into the hydrocarbon-rich waters of Lygia Mare. This is the first time humanity has seen a river system of such scale and clarity anywhere beyond Earth. But it's not just flowing methane that carves and reshapes Titan's icy surface. The moon's alien landscape is also sculpted by landforms that are strikingly familiar, features you might recognize from deserts on Earth. Hey. V101 Space here, and if you're wondering why I'm suddenly speaking like the guys from Vsauce, well that's because this video is sponsored by the Curiosity Box. If you're like me, always curious, always questioning, and constantly chasing that next wow moment, you're going to love the Curiosity Box. Created by the brilliant minds at Vsauce, this quarterly subscription box is packed with exclusive mind-blowing science, puzzles, and discoveries you won't find anywhere else. Let me show you what's in my winter curiosity box. I really like this Schmoyer sundial. It's one of the few sundial designs in the world that can tell accurate clock time. It's a really interesting, hands-on way of learning some pretty incredible science. There is the clock that went backward, a really captivating book of stories including the very first documented science fiction stories. Plus check this out, a rainbow diffraction chocolate mould. You can literally make edible rainbows while learning about the science of light. How fun is that? Along with many other fascinating items, this box is a treasure trove of curiosity and discovery, igniting your inner scientist. So, if you're ready to keep your curiosity thriving, why not subscribe? Use my code V101 to get 25% off your first box. Stretching across Titan's equatorial regions are sprawling dune fields, reminiscent of Earth's sand seas, but with an otherworldly twist. Unlike Earth's dunes composed of silica sand, Titan's dunes are formed from grainy hydrocarbons, organic particles that condense in its atmosphere and fall like alien snow onto the frozen ground. These dark, wind-sculpted ridges can tower 100 meters high, making them gigantic compared to sand dunes on Earth. Among these majestic formations lies Shangri-La, a vast equatorial expanse that showcases the persistence of Titan's gentle winds to shape its icy surface. But Shangri-La is just one chapter of a larger story. 
Nearby, the great sand seas of Belette and Fensel unfurl across the landscape, each with their own unique patterns and features. Like the flowing seas, these vast dune fields are living evidence of the moon's active climate and the processes that continually shape this Earth-like yet profoundly alien world. To the southeast, near the edge of the vast Shangri-La dune fields we have already observed, lies a feature that holds future promise for exploration, a place that could unlock the secrets of Titan's complex chemistry and even its potential for life. This grainy radar image is of the Selk Crater, a young impact structure approximately 90 kilometers in diameter that offers a unique glimpse into Titan's geologic and chemical history. Surrounding the crater are melt pools and deposits, sites where the heat of the impact may have temporarily melted subsurface water ice, creating conditions for liquid water and organic molecules to interact. These brief but crucial moments could have sparked the formation of amino acids or other compounds, providing a rare window into the Moon's potential habability. Excitingly, NASA's future Dragonfly mission has chosen this region as a site of exploration. The revolutionary dual rotor drone will touch down near the Selk crater before embarking on a groundbreaking journey. Who knows what wonders it will discover? As Dragonfly prepares to write the next chapter in Titan's story, it builds upon a legacy of exploration, one that began with the historic Huygens probe in 2005. Long before Dragonfly's cutting-edge drone was conceived, Huygens ventured into the unknown, becoming the first spacecraft to land on Titan and offering humanity its first close-up look at this alien world. By using radar imaging, the Cassini spacecraft pinpointed the location of Huygens' landing site, a plane near the moon's equator, nestled within the boundaries of the vast Shangri-La dune region. Although the Huygens' landing site seems unremarkable from Cassini's vantage point, from Huygens' perspective, as it plummeted towards the shrouded moon's surface, we get a far grander view of this region, shifting the spotlight from Cassini back to Huygens. As the probe pierced the thick golden haze of Titan's atmosphere, its onboard cameras began a historic transmission. A descent video capturing the moon's alien surface in unprecedented detail. At first, the view is little more than an orange-brown blur, a smog-like shroud so dense that it obscures everything beyond. But as the probe falls deeper, breaking through the clouds roughly 50 kilometers above the surface, details slowly begin to emerge. A glimpse of the landscape we have just seen from above comes into focus. Dark, sprawling valleys cut through brighter, elevated terrain, their boundaries etched by time and flowing liquids. Drainage channels snake through the hills, hinting at the power of methane rain carving its way across this frozen world. It's a surreal, otherworldly vista, simultaneously alien and strangely familiar. A place shaped by forces both starkly different from and eerily similar to Earth's. With each passing second, Titan's surface grows sharper, more defined. The probe's final moments of descent capture a paintwork of soft plains and scattered rocky features. A tantalizing glimpse of the ground it would soon touch. And then Huygens lands. The final image taken by Huygens, captured just moments after landing, reveals a scene that defies imagination. The camera's lens peers out across a flat expanse, the horizon shrouded in a thick haze that softens every detail. The foreground is littered with scattered pebbles, each a rounded fragment of water ice frozen harder than granite. Their shapes suggest they've been smoothed by the slow, grinding action of liquid methane over time, 
remnants of a dynamic past. The surface itself appears like damp, compacted sand, though it's not sand at all. It's a layer of icy grains, cold enough to preserve its form for eons. In the distance, faint rolling hills rise against the horizon, barely visible through Titan's perpetual haze. The image tells a quiet story, a region where rivers once flowed, where methane rains have shaped the landscape. Though no liquid is visible in the landing zone, the area strongly resembles a dried up riverbed or lake bed, almost like a frozen, methane soaked mirror of our own Earth. In just one image, Huygens gave humanity its first and only direct look at the surface of Titan's largest moon. It's a view that reminds us of just how much there is still to explore. Together, Huygens and Cassini formed a team unlike any other, one probing the surface while the other observed from above. Their combined efforts brought Titan's hidden landscapes to light, proving that even in the cold, distant reaches of the solar system, the mysteries of worlds like Titan can slowly be unraveled. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then remember to like and subscribe for much more to come. And if you would like to support my channel even further then why not buy me a coffee? A small donation goes a long way and helps me improve what I am attempting to build. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.